Hello, today we are doing grade two, unit two, session seven. And I'm going to be starting on the second computer screen for unit two, session seven. You would have seen a picture of Jesus with the 12 apostles if you're scrolling through the screen. If you're following from the book, if you would open to page 61, first of all, there's, there's two pictures on that page, Peter's Denial, by Anton Robert Leinweiber, and then there's a picture by Raphael, Christ Charge to Peter. So you would also you could also see those on the computer screen if you went back one more um, icon from from the screen that you see up here. But it's easier, I think, to see them from the book because it's bigger. So in the first one, you see that Peter is looking very sad. He has his um, hand over his face and he's crying. And then you see a, a bird there, like a rooster, because Jesus had made a prediction on the night before he died, which was Holy Thursday night, the night that he gave us his body and blood in Holy Communion, the night that he gave us the sacrament of, the, of Holy Orders of the priesthood. And, and Peter had said to Jesus, Lord, I'm, I'm ready to die for you. I'll, I'll never deny you. And Jesus said, Peter, before the cock crows, you're going to deny me three times. So in other words, before morning, three times you're going to deny me. And, and Peter said, I'll never deny you. I'll, I'll die for you. But what happened is, after Jesus was captured by his enemies, Peter got really scared. And when people asked him, are you a follower of Jesus? Three times he said, no, I, I don't know the man. And so in this picture, you'll see he's crying because the, the cock has just crowed. And as soon as the rooster crows, Peter remembers what Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows, you'll deny me three times. And he's so sad that he has committed this big sin against Jesus. And so what happens, what we're going to read now is um, what happened after Jesus rose from the dead. And then that same that during the 40 days he was on earth before he ascended into heaven, at one point he met with all the apostles on, on a morning after they'd been out fishing all night. And this is what the conversation was that they had. So I'm going to read this to you, and I want you to think about the mercy of Jesus. You'll find this on page, page 62 in your book or here on the computer screen. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. You know, I just remember that we didn't start out the session with a prayer, so we need to pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come by means of the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. Heavenly Father, Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for his merciful love. Thank you that he died and rose and ascended into heaven to save us. And I pray that we would always have open hearts to him and that when we have sinned, we will turn back to him with our whole heart and receive his merciful love. We ask this through the prayers of our blessed mother, Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mary, Queen of the angels, pray for us. All you holy angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So in this passage that I'm reading to you, this comes from John chapter 21, the last chapter in St. John's Gospel. And so Peter had, Jesus had just asked Peter the first time, do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. So Jesus replied, feed my lambs. He then said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. When he had said this, he said to him, follow me. 
So you probably have already figured out that when Jesus is talking about the sheep, he's talking about us. Remember, he, in another part of the gospel, he said, I am the good shepherd. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. So we are the sheep of God. He's like, you know, the good shepherd who leads us to the kingdom, to the place where we will have whatever we need forever, the fullness of joy. So notice how Peter had denied three times that he knew Jesus. But Jesus is so merciful that and when he rose from the dead, he came, he came to Peter and he let Peter three times say, I love you to make up for the three times that he had denied him. And we know that Peter ended up becoming a, a very great saint. He was the first Pope of the Catholic Church. So let's, let's look at now, um, you can either click on the arrow at the bottom of your screen to go on to the questions or you can follow, um, you can pause the video and answer the questions. Then we'll discuss the answers. So I'm gonna give the answers from, from the book starting on page 63. How many times did Peter betray Jesus before his death? Three. How many times did Jesus ask Peter if he loved him? Three. What did Jesus tell Peter to do each time that he asked him if he loved him? So there's, there's three different answers which are very similar. The first, feed my lambs, tend my sheep, and feed my sheep. What did Jesus tell Peter to do at the very end? Follow me. How do you think Peter felt after Jesus gave him another chance to love him again? Well, I'm sure that he was so happy. I mean, and I, I don't think that Peter ever stopped loving Jesus, but, but he fell into sin out of fear and out of um, forgetting to keep his eyes focused on Jesus and on the love of Jesus. Jesus forgave Peter and gave him another chance to follow him. Have you ever been given a second chance? And how did that feel? So, I mean, all of you would have different answers to that. But I think we all have um, experienced mercy, either from our parents or our brothers or sisters or our friends. But especially we've experienced mercy from God but because he always forgives us. And in the sacrament of confession, we can always go to him, no matter what sins we've committed. If we're sorry for those sins, they will be forgiven. We have to always remember that because there's no limit to God's mercy. So if, if we go to him with trust and confidence in his merciful love, we will be forgiven. Now, um, if you go to your next, oh wait, well, those are, the, those are the answers. So go back to the home page. And then we're going to go to the next screen, which is from, or on your book, it's going to be page 64, which is from Jesus to the apostles, from the apostles to today. So you'll see on the screen, it's going to look um, like this. You'll see a crayon page. And the, the picture is pretty much the same as what you have in your book, but it's so small. I think it's a little bit hard to see. So Looking at your book on page 64, okay, you're going to color in um, Holy Spirit in yellow. You, you can do this later on if you want, or you can pause the video and do it now. Then authority, you're going to color in in red. And forgiveness of sins, you're going to color in purple. So yellow for the Holy Spirit, red for authority, and purple for forgiveness of sins. Now, now, Jesus made St. Peter the leader of all the apostles. And I'm going to read that to you from the Gospel of St. Matthew. Okay, this is in Matthew chapter 16. Now, Jesus, having come into the district of Caesarea Philippi, began to ask his disciples, saying, Who do men say the Son of Man is? But they said, Some say John the Baptist, and others Elijah and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Then Jesus answered and said, blessed are you, Simon, son of John,
for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged his disciples to tell no one that he was Jesus, the Christ. So turn back for a moment to the picture in your book on page 61, at the bottom of the page where it says, Christ charged to Peter. Okay, this is, Jesus is giving Peter the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now that's, that's not the same as the key that opens your front door, okay? It's a different kind of key. The key is represents the authority. You know, the person who has the keys has the authority over the house. And so Peter is being given authority over the house of the church, the church of the living God, which is the Catholic church. So Peter is the first pope of the Catholic church. And Jesus had told him, it, what's interesting for you to know is that Peter wasn't the name that his mother and father gave him. His mother and father gave him the name Simon. But when Jesus met Simon, he said, you shall be called Peter, which, which means rock. And so, so Jesus was already, from the first time he met him, he was already making a prophecy of this day when he would make him the leader of the whole Catholic Church. And ever since then, now if you turn back in your book again to page 64, ever since then, that authority has been handed down from Peter and the first 11 apostles with him to the bishops. Because see, the, the Pope, um, Peter and the, 12, the 11 apostles who were with him, they were the first bishops of the church, the first bishops, and Peter was the first Pope. So when they... They, handed, they ordained other men to be bishops by laying their hands on their heads and praying over them because only a bishop can ordain another bishop. And then those bishops could ordain other priests and the priests could ordain deacons. So, so that chain of ordination goes all the way back to Jesus Christ at the Last Supper when he ordained those 12 men to be the first bishops. And sadly, one of them Judas Iscariot became very wicked and, and betrayed Jesus to his enemies. But later, Judas Iscariot was replaced by another man who became a bishop, and that was St. Matthias, who became the 12th apostle, taking the place of Judas Iscariot. So those, those bishops um, were the first, first bishops of the church, and they ordained other bishops. So all the way back um, from our present bishop, and one of the things that you need to do on this page, either on 64 in your book or in, you can do it in the, on the computer screen, is to write the name of our bishop. And you might want to pause to do that, to write the bishop and, the, and our priest's names. But our bishop is Bishop Peter Labashi. You spell his name L-I-B-A-S-C-I. Bishop Labashi. And our priests at Our Lady of the Holy Rosary in St. Leo parishes are Father Paul and Father Adrian. Paul is spelled P A U L, and Adrian is spelled A D R I A N. Also in, at St. Mary's parish is Father Tom, spelled T H O M. And then Father Andrew in Summersworth, Andrew is spelled A N. D-R-E-W. So those are some of our local priests who are um, in, our, in our diocese and in our parishes. So the bishop is over the whole diocese. The state of New Hampshire makes up one whole diocese of the Diocese of Manchester. And so the bishop is in charge of all the priests in the Diocese of Manchester. So that authority um, coming from Jesus Christ has been handed down. That's one of the, that's why we call the church apostolic because it, the authority of the sacrament of holy orders goes back to the apostles. It's apostolic. And that's why 
in the Catholic Church, we have the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, that, that we have priests who have the power to change the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. And we have priests who have the power to absolve people from their sins because our church is apostolic. That power was given to the apostles and it was handed on through the sacrament of holy orders down through all the centuries. There are many Christian churches that are not apostolic, so they don't have the real presence of Jesus Christ because they, they didn't keep that chain of ordination. So they lost the power. If the power doesn't come from Jesus Christ, nobody has the power. So for example, um, in a Baptist church, they do have a communion service, but it's not the real presence of Jesus Christ. It's just bread. It's just a symbol. But in the Catholic Church, it's the living body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ because that authority goes back to Jesus Christ himself. Also, the authority to forgive sins was handed down through the apostles. So if you go back to the home screen now, okay, and then go to our next screen, which is going to be the story that's on page 65, which is St. Ambrose and St. Augustine. Right, these were two very great saints of the church. We call them fathers of the church and doctors of the church. Like early teachers um, had those two titles. Many of they didn't all have the title doctor, but um, the early teachers had the title fathers. So I'm going to read this to you, and I might pause and um, add some more comments in. Or you, you can follow on the computer screen, or you can follow on page 65 and 66. Long ago, St. Ambrose became a great bishop of Milan, Italy. Ambrose was well known for his goodness and his love for Jesus. So when Milan needed a new bishop, the people shouted that it should be Ambrose. The problem was that Andros, Ambrose wasn't a priest. So you can't become a bishop if you're not a priest. Because see, Holy Orders has three levels, first deacon, then priest, then bishop. So a person has to be ordained to each one of those levels. He had never had his first communion and he wasn't even baptized. So you can't receive any sacrament if you're not baptized, especially the sacrament of holy orders. But Ambrose loved Jesus so much that he agreed to be made bishop. He was baptized, received his first holy communion, and probably his confirmation as well and first well, probably not reconciliation because baptism takes away all your sins. So he wouldn't need to go to confession right away. He probably received that sacrament afterwards. And he was made, made a priest. After that, he was made a bishop. So he was ordained a priest and then a bishop and went on to become one of the great saints of the church, Ambrose. We still read his writing, some of the things that he wrote. One day, a man named Augustine heard Bishop Ambrose preach. St. Augustine lived a sinful life. He was so moved by the words of Ambrose that he decided to change his life and follow Jesus. And Augustine also had a very holy mother. Her name was St. Monica, and she prayed for her son for, I think it was 18 years, she prayed for him before he finally met Ambrose and decided to become to be baptized and to become Catholic. St. Ambrose welcomed Augustine with great love. He taught Augustine about Christianity and baptized him. Augustine eventually became an even more well-known bishop and saint than Ambrose. The church still learns from his work today. In fact, um, if you take the Catechism of the Catholic Church, I was looking to see if I had a copy here to show you. Um, the Catechism of the Catholic Church is a pretty thick book. And um, it's very, very beautifully written catechism. It's like a summary of the church's beliefs. But that catechism quotes St. Augustine. I would guess that it quotes him more than 100 times. That's how influential Augustine has been in, in, in the development and presentation of Catholic doctrine, even though Augustine lived in the 400s. So think about that. Like for 1,600 years, the Holy Spirit has allowed what he taught St. Augustine to influence us even to this day. The church continues Jesus' work of forgiving sins. The sacrament of penance and reconciliation helps people remove sin from their lives. Both St. Ambrose and St. Augustine continued the work of Jesus and the apostles 
when they forgave the sins of the people with this sacrament. So if you click on this arrow, okay, then um, you would come to the questions. So you might want to pause and answer these questions. Okay, the questions also are on page 66 and 67. So I, I would just like to give you those answers. What did Ambrose have to do before he could be made bishop? He had to be baptized. Remember, you can't receive any sacrament of the seven sacraments until you're first baptized. Baptism is the doorway to all the other sacraments. So he had to be baptized. He had to receive his first Holy Communion. He had to be ordained a priest and then ordained a, a high priest, which is the bishop. How did St. Ambrose and St. Augustine continue the work of Jesus and the apostles? Well, they continued it by forgiving sins in the sacrament of confession but also by celebrating this holy sacrifice of the mass, which is the priest's most important work, is to celebrate the sacrifice of the mass, to sanctify people and, and to bring them to, to Jesus Christ through the sacraments. Now I wanna to read to you, um, I want you to go back to the home screen if you're following on the computer and on page six, you're gonna be on page 67 if you are, um, if you're following from the book. So it's called The Gift of Forgiveness. Okay, and I want to um, read to you from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 20, what happened on Easter Sunday night. This is really important for you to know. This was the Easter, the, the, the night, he rose from the dead in the morning, and it was that night when he appeared to his 12 apostles. Well, it is 11 apostles because Judas Iscariot wasn't there and Matthias had not yet been chosen to take the place of Judas Iscariot. So 11 apostles. When it was late that, and actually only 10 because Thomas wasn't there either. When it was late that same day, the first of the week, though the doors where the disciples gathered had been closed for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, peace be to you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples therefore rejo rejoiced at the sight of the Lord. He therefore said to them again, peace be to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. When he had said this, he breathed upon them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven them, and whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. So that was the sacrament of confession. So Easter Sunday night, Jesus gave the apostles the power to forgive sins, which is like an incredible power. It's the second most incredible power. The first most power, incredible power he gave to his priests was the, the power to consecrate bread and wine into his living body, blood, soul, and divinity. That's the, most, the first most powerful gift. But the second most powerful is that he gave them the power to forgive sins in the sacrament of confession. So, so a priest, an ordained priest is the most powerful man on the earth in a certain sense. In fact, St. John Vianney, who's the patron saint of, of, of parish priests said, I'd more sooner bow to a priest than to an angel. Now, now that's why we have to pray for our priests because they have the most important mission of any people on the earth. They have the mission of of bringing people to God through the, through the Holy Sacraments. So that's when Jesus gave us the sacrament of, of confession. And Thomas wasn't there. He, he came the next week and received that gift. And there's a whole story about St. Thomas, which I'm not going to tell it to you right now, but you can read it in John chapter 20. So on page 67, you can read these two questions and then um, answer them. You can pause the video. Jesus gave the power to forgive sins to the apostles. The apostles passed that power to the bishops and priests who took their place. How do you think a priest feels when he shares the power to forgive sins with Jesus? I'm sure that he feels very happy to be able to bring one of God's people back to the heart of God. What, what a gift. Sin, and also, that's another thing you should think about. What, like when you go to confession, that the priest is not going to be mad at you for the sins you committed. He's going to be happy that you're confessing them because he knows that this is bringing you back to the heart of Jesus, 
who loves you so much and wants to be your friend. Sin can make us feel sad and guilty. God wants us to experience his mercy and forgiveness in this life. He wants us to feel his help when we don't make good choices. What would you say to thank Jesus for the gift of his forgiveness? So this would be different for each one of you, but I mean, we all owe Jesus a big thanks because he went through so much to be able to give us that sacrament of confession and that sacrament of his precious body and blood, all the sacraments. He went through being mocked and scourged and crowned with thorns and crucified for us. And he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven and he sent his own Holy Spirit to us to be our guide. Not to mention that he gave us his own mother to be our mother and he gave us our own personal guardian angel to watch over us. So let's close by praying that a prayer for, for the holy souls in purgatory, because we have to keep them in mind. We have to think about the souls who are waiting to get up to heaven because they need our prayers. So I'm going to read to you a prayer that was written by St. Gertrude the Great for the holy souls. Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus, in union with the Masses said throughout the world today, for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those in my own home and within my family. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, God bless you all. Thank you very much.